went to a minor hockey game, first one of the first one of the season this this weekend. Got back up out of town and uh, went and watched. It was uh, minor Adam. So you three. <laughs> no, it was no. It was very funny because I went there to watch uh, uh, my nephew play, and um, he's a goalie. So he's uh, nine years old, I think it is. And uh, I was just sitting there to just. I I don't know if I was saying this to the boys last night. I don't know if it's my experience in hockey. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older. It's, I don't know if it's because I've trained so many people and I wonder like why so many people train at a young age and stuff like that. But I was watching the game and I was just watching. Like I was trying to enjoy the game, which was which was fine. It's little kids hockey. Um, but I was really watching the behavior and watching the. Um, I don't know what the word is, but the whole atmosphere of youth hockey and what comes with it being in this business. And I was just sitting there like kind of laughing because in at you, at you, uh, what is it? U nine, U 10. It's mine. It's the first, uh, they were playing select seven last year yeah. or Dear novice young. or something like yeah. that, which is very young. And, over the, you know, it happens every year. Like dads at that age start asking me questions like, because they feel like their kid is a really good hockey player or they want to get out of this crap that they're in, right? The small town hockey mm-hmm. and stuff. And they, and their, and their, their sample size is like a very small sample size. And the question always is, should we move up? Like there was one guy around here last year saying, should my kid move up and stuff? And I'm like, oh, he's, he's, he's seven or six at the time. It doesn't matter. Um, but I'm watching, I'm watching the hockey and, and this is not to be an ass. Okay. But I always tell people, I go like, you don't know what type of hockey player he's going to be. Even if you think he's good at eight or nine years old or 10 or 11, there's some signs, but so anyways, I watched this and I went, wow, these people are like, the parents are making decisions and are really, really, really invested in the game. Uh, you know, with training and, um, you know, they got to get them on the ice all the time. When, when I watch this game, I'm watching like, it's not hockey yet. It's mm-hmm. just not hockey yet. Goalies, you know, the goalies. You can barely butterfly, man. Like, yeah. And, and, and like, like my nephew moves around pretty good. Yeah. But having said that, I said, there's not, there's not big time shooters yet. There's, mm-hmm. there's a lot of net. He doesn't, uh, you know, and he, he did, he did pretty good, but you're, you're playing against like a, like a, Anyways, the hockey is not, it's just little kids hockey. Yeah. So my point of that is I'm watching it and I'm watching like the seriousness of the, the coaches wearing their shirt and tie and the preparation and the, uh, or if you would call it preparation and the, the, the seriousness, the seriousness of the coaching and the, um, at the, and the bottom line is that, you know, there was, was supposed to be, I was told there was someone on that, uh, on the ice that day that's supposed to be like, like sick, like sick. So it took me a while to figure out who it was. And when I, what I noticed is like, he's a pretty good little player. Like he skates like a good, powerful, nice looking stride and stuff, but there's nowhere, nowhere in his, in, in the way he plays that I say that, well, yeah, that guy, that kid's got something. Yeah. So, you know, so anyways, my point is that the parents, you know, parents in the, uh, they invest so much time and they invest so much money, like thousands and thousands of dollars at an age where you don't even know if your kid likes hockey. Yep. And you brought up a good point the other day because we were talking about some of the, the um, habits. I don't know, habits isn't the right word. Some of the whatever, what, what parents do to uh, ensure their kids get the right help and all that kind of stuff. And you said it best. It goes, I think a lot of the times parents do it not for, they never say it to the, like if the kid who was at home doing their stuff and bugging the shit out of dad and mom about getting more, can I get more, can I get help? And then that's, that's, that's a good thing. But I think a lot of the times the parents are the, are the ones seeking it. Yeah. And your comment was, you think that a lot of the people do it, a lot of the parents do it for them rather than for the kid. Yeah. And I thought about it and I'm like, yeah, I, that's a really fair statement. Really fair statement. Well, it it actually bugs me because you're I, the way I said it to you when we were talking about it the other day it was like they're, you're taking advantage of a little kid. Yeah. Right. Like even though it's your kid, you you see it in their eyes, man. When you talk to some of these parents, it's like, oh, yeah. tell me who this is for right now. Yeah. You know. And like when your kid is ten and eleven, like just enjoy the game, man. Like enjoy the process. Like your kid's having fun playing a game being on a team like making friends like doing all that kind of stuff like that's what it's for 
when you're a kid. It's about being it being fun. It shouldn't be you're treating your kid like a soldier from day one to be like the best hockey player ever. And it's because what what ends up happening, like a lot of times what I find is like, and, and there's exceptions to this obviously, but it's a parent who like never played or wasn't successful playing yeah. or like almost played or like almost made it or almost this or whatever. And then they're turning it over onto their kid now yeah. and being like, well, now that I, I know what I would have done different. Now I'm going to make you do that. Yeah. It's like, we have, what if your kid doesn't like it? And when he's yeah. 10, he doesn't know what he likes. No, you idea. know, just, and I was talking about, you know, looking at some of the, these guys that are playing in like OHL and stuff now, it's like, and these are the kids that were like, they drove the ship mm-hmm. to decide the kids we know I'm talking about. Cause mm-hmm. obviously there's exceptions, but like the kids we know that are playing in the OHL, everything was all hockey all the time. Like you weren't twisting their arm to get them to play. You weren't making them train. You weren't telling them to shoot pucks. You weren't telling them to go practice. You weren't doing any of that. It's like they just went and did it mm-hmm. on their own. Mm-hmm. And like some kids, like because when I was a kid, like my dad had gave me a little bit of a push. He didn't just like totally let me dictate. And I'm not saying you can't ever give your kid a push or anything. But for me, when it came down to it, like when I was 12, 13, 14, it was like I was just doing it myself now. It's like I was 14 and I was practicing all the time. Yep. I was training all the time because I wanted to. Like nobody was making me or forcing me to do it. And it wasn't for like when I, when I, I watched some of these parents, it's like, you're losing your mind watching yeah. this game right now. Yeah. It's like, is that, who is, wh- who's this game for? Like, yeah. is, there, is it for you? Because yeah. that's what it seems like a lot of the time, you know, and, you know, bouncing up to the, to the OHL stuff again. It's like, there's those kids are kids that for the most part, just really love playing hockey. And like all they wanted to do was play hockey. And it wasn't somebody twisting their arm to make them, want to do it or or whatever even though some parents obviously have other motivations sometimes but for the most part it's like the kid has to love hockey so give him a chance to be a kid and figure out if he likes the game first you know yeah and it's like i i hope that doesn't come across as negative like to people like we you you shouldn't train and you shouldn't play you shouldn't be all into it because like here's 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 what i think that hockey and it's so hard for people because you can get caught up in your kids you can get caught up in your life for a lot of for a lot of uh adults um, they may have missed the boat on their own success in life. And so they, they, they feel like, okay, I got to teach, I think, teach my kid how to work hard and all that stuff when you, when you don't really understand what that means. Um, but, but also a lot of parents are bored. So a lot of the times it's like what they look forward to so much is getting together to, to the, at the hockey rink. And yeah. what, what, what happens there is that you, you're talking with people. So you're around different type of people, not just your work dudes. And uh, you're talking about something that everyone's a little bit interested in, and it's usually about your kid, which is all good. Yeah. And uh, but it gets carried away, and uh, so so they go to the rink, and like I noticed this with parents, and you know um, when, when Charlie played minor hockey, it was always about the hockey, always about the kid here, here, and they're always comparing and stuff. And they used to sit there and go, "Man, you're you're missing the boat." 